In the same exact way that regular alkenes are capable of forming cis-trans conformations, cis-trans isomers, conjugated 1,3-dienes, conjugated alkenes, can also form cis-trans isomers because the chemical bond between the second and third carbon on the 1,3-diene is capable of rotating. For example, let's suppose we take the 1,3-butadiene molecule molecule which is a conjugated system. So basically if we look at the following conformation in this conformation the H1 and the H2, the H1 attached to carbon 2 and the H2 attached to carbon 3 are found on the same plane on the plane of the board but are found on opposite sides and this means this must be the trans isomer whenever we're talking about trans isomers or cis isomers of conjugated system we have to add the s symbol in front of it where s designates the word single single bond that needs to rotate for our conformation change to actually take place. So basically, our molecule is able to rotate back and forth as a result of this chemical bond's ability to rotate in space. So we go from S trans isomer to S cis isomer and back. Now, in this case, notice that these two H atoms are found on the same plane and on the same side, and that's exactly why we call it the S cis isomer. Now, the question that you might be wondering is, which one of these isomers is more stable and why? And in fact, how exactly can we go from the trans isomer to the cis isomer and back to the trans? What is required to take place for this interconversion to actually exist. So let's take a look at the following orbital diagram. So this is the orbital diagram of the S trans and this is the orbital diagram of the S cis isomer of 1,3 butadiene. So in this case, we have the first pi bond between the first and second carbon and this bond here is coming out of the board. Then the bond that is rotating, the bond between the second and third carbon is on the plane of the board. And then the third carbon, the pi bond here, is going into the board. And notice that H1 is going into the board, H2 is coming out of the board, and that's why this is our S trans. So basically, how can we go from this conformation to this conformation? And what is the difference between these two conformations? So basically, a rotation of this bond must take place. And as this bond rotates, this entire pi bond also rotates. So as the rotation takes place, this pi bond is not actually broken, it remains intact. So as the rotation is taking place, these pi bonds are not actually disrupted. Now, once our uh, once our rotation actually takes place and the rotation is 180 degrees, we get the following result. So now the H1 and H2 are both found on the same plane, on the same side, and they are pointing into the board. While these two carbons are coming out of the board and now our two pi bonds are also on the same plane and on the same side and are coming out of the board. Board. Now notice another important difference between this and this is that on this side these two lobes have the same exact sign and these two lobes have the same exact sign. These are positive and these are negative so blue and green but on this side we have a blue and a green and a green and a blue so positive negative and negative and positive and that will play a role in the stability of these isomers as we'll mention in just a moment. So basically, in order to go from the S trans to our S cis, 
a certain amount of energy must be inputted. This is known as the activation energy. So once again, notice that when the rotation takes place, the two pi bonds are not disrupted, but in fact remain intact, even in our transition state. So as the rotation takes place, these pi bonds are not broken. So we can imagine when the bond is rotating, these pi bonds do not actually break, they remain intact. However, what does take place is, in this particular case, we have an interaction taking place between these two orbitals. So the carbon two and carbon three orbitals are aligned and they interact. However, when the rotation takes place in this particular position, the degree measure between this orbital and this orbital is let's say 90 degrees and that means there is no overlap and that means this bond is broken between the second and the third orbital and that's exactly why this transition state is higher in energy and is found in this position and that's why a certain amount of activation energy must be overcome for this conversion to actually take place. And the activation barrier is about four to five kilocals of energy per mole of molecule. Now notice from this diagram, if the y-axis is the energy diagram, we see that the S trans isomer is slightly lower in energy and therefore more stable than our cis isomer. But why should this be true? Why is the trans more stable than the cis? Well, the argument that we're going to follow to explain this phenomenon is the fact that in our trans, as compared to the cis, the trans doesn't have much steric hindrance between the H1 and the H2 atom. But in this case, these H1 and H2 atoms basically bump one another and that causes steric hindrance. So it turns out that in the S trans isomer, the groups, the H atoms, are relatively far apart and do not contribute much to steric hindrance. However, in the S cis case, there is bumping of those H atoms, which leads to steric hindrance. So in our cis case, these two H atoms are found on the same plane, on the same side, and their nuclei and electron densities, electron clouds, basically bump one another, and that increases the energy slightly by an amount that is equal to about two to three kilocals per mole of molecule. Now, if we examine in this case, the H1 and H2, their electron densities are found on opposite sides. And so there is no bumping taking place and there is very little steric hindrance. And, that, and that's exactly why the S trans isomer is slightly below in energy than the S cis isomer. So once again, just like regular monoalkenes, dialkenes, specifically 1,3-dialkenes, conjugated systems, have S trans isomers as well as S cis isomers. Now the trans isomers are below in energy compared to our cis as a result of no steric hindrance between these H atoms as shown in this diagram.